Today I'm eating a five course meal on a $100 million mega yacht. I'm also gonna be eating caviar on a $1 million boat and then catching a lobster dinner on a $10,000 dinghy. But I'm starting here with this $100 sushi boat. This boat is filled with every type of fish imaginable. It's got sea urchin, scallops, tuna, shrimp, salmon, and so much more. The crazy thing is, I never knew sushi boats could actually float, so I'm glad we tried this out. Bayashi, come take a bite. I'm gonna go for some uni, my second favorite food in the world behind a good rotisserie chicken. Mm. And we're not even at level one. Let's head to our first real boat. This is a $10,000 boat that I'll be using to try to catch myself dinner. Well, the boat was actually less than $10,000. I spent the rest of the money dropping five lobster traps around this area. This thing rips. Well worth the money. The first trap is right up here. This is, without a question, the hardest I've ever had to work for my dinner. It's empty. But for now, I'm just gonna open up our bait bag and dump out all the extra scraps, then toss in some new bait, tie it back up, then once we've closed and locked it up, back into the ocean it goes. Trap number two. Oh! <laughs> we've got our first lobster of the day, but if the lobster's torso is not three and a quarter inches, we cannot keep it. And this looks dangerously close. Let's check. You hook the front right inside where the eye is and then go over the back, and damn, as you can see, it's not quite there. This beautiful guy here gets to live another day. Trap number three, do me proud. It's gonna be a real sad day if I came all the way out here to not catch a thing. Crabs, damn it. One thing that does happen a lot when you rig up lobster traps is you get tons and tons of these crabs. The sun is starting to set. We still have two traps to check. I haven't lost hope, but I am starting to get a little nervous. <sighs> Trap number four, crabs. Again, this is our last hope. Everything rides on what is in this trap right now. <sighs> Oh my God. Oh, we got three. The lobster gods were looking out for us today, Manny. This thing is enormous. It's a lobster big enough probably to feed almost two people. We got another beautiful one right here. In fact, this is a perfect size for just one person and probably the lobster that I'm gonna cook up. But before I cook it up, since we got a couple of these lobster, we need to stick bands on them so they don't kill each other. I'll put a simple rubber band onto the end of this device, then open it up. Then I'll stretch it right around that claw and release. For this, I'm gonna start simple with just a bit of fresh salt seawater, which I'm gonna cover and bring to a boil on my good old burner. While this is heating up, I'm going to kill the lobster the proper way. This will put him right out of his misery before we cook him. Once this begins to steam a little bit, we'll go ahead and toss in our lobster. It's been about 12 or 13 minutes, which means our lobster should be cooked. And it's time to eat. I don't think I've ever been more excited to have lobster in my entire life. With this tail here, I'm gonna crack all the way down, then rip it open, and when lobster is fresh like this, you can pull it straight out. That right there is a perfect, beautiful piece of lobster. Let's have a taste. Wow, the meat is so incredibly fresh. Now that the tail's done, I'll do the claws. For those, I'll crack again, drink the juice, <sighs> crack once more, and out comes that beautiful claw. Because we only caught this lobster 15 minutes ago, we might have just made a world record time for eating a lobster straight from the ocean. Guys, I am not kidding when I say those were the best few bites of lobster I have ever had in my entire life. And after all that hard work catching my own food today, I could use a refreshing drink. This is not just a regular water bottle. This is Air Up. The only thing in this bottle is plain water. Air Up makes it taste like it's flavored through scent. All you have to do is pop your flavor pot on, pull it up to activate, and sip. Listen to the sound as I drink it. That noise you're hearing is all the scented air that's tricking my brain into thinking that this water is flavored like blueberry. And it tastes delicious. As a chef, I love turning a boring experience like drinking water into something that's fun, flavorful, and exciting. And Air Up has helped me to do exactly that. If you click on the link in my description and type in code CHEFNICK, you'll get 15% off any purchase. So don't forget to check it out. I'm feeling refreshed, so let's head to our next boat. I'm on a $1 million boat where I'm about to eat some caviar. This boat features a beautiful sun deck, a full bar and a luxurious dining area. They even let Manny drive. Let's let the caviar crews come in. Good evening, sir. I have your vintage 2012 Dom Perignon. May I? Yes, please. You're gonna have to give me a second. I've never done this before. Oh my God. All right, I think I got it. Before you try this, just wanna let you know this is our white small batch. There's only 12 ever made. You're the first person to actually ever try this. Just open it. Okay. <laughs> just go like, like this? Yep. Can I shake it a little bit? No, don't shake it. Take the wire completely off. Oh my. Oh my God, I didn't know it was gonna explode. Man. Oh my God. And now the most satisfying part of caviar, opening the tin. Oh my God. 
In addition to this incredible bottle of Dom Perignon champagne that Manny has just poured, we have a 500 gram tin of Royal Acetra caviar, the best of the best. And this comes with a variety of traditional caviar accompaniments, including Ritz crackers, potato chips, egg white and egg yolk, red onion, creme fraiche, and lemon. I'm gonna start with a Ritz cracker. Once we've loaded up our cracker, I'll finish this one with just a touch of creme fraiche. And this right here will be an incredible bite. It's salty, a little bit fatty, super, super rich. I thought that lobster from earlier would be hard to beat, but this does it. The only thing better than doing it on a Ritz cracker is using a potato chip. For this one, I'll put just a touch of egg and a little bit of lemon juice. Manny, what'd you think of this boat? Insane. We're about to go on one a hundred times bigger. This is Mirabella, one of the largest boats in the entire world. It also happens to have one of the best chefs in the entire yachting world. At nearly 160 feet long, one of the largest boats Northrop & Johnson offers, this boat's got a lot of space. Before we eat, let's take a quick tour, starting with this jacuzzi right here. This massive outdoor dining room table has a huge Lazy Susan so everyone can share their food. It's got automatic doors. This boat is 10 times fancier than my house. It even has this $100,000 hidden TV in the living room. But just wait until you see this bathroom. What? It's crazy. This has to be the coolest bathroom ever. Walking through all these bathrooms, I literally feel like I'm at a fancy spa. Let's check out the bedrooms. Mirabella has not one, not two, but five different guest bedrooms on board. And these bedrooms are so nice that it's literally like sleeping in a luxury hotel. This is just crazy. Hey, Captain. Hey, guys. This is fantastic. Look how many controls there are. Is it hard to captain a boat like this? It gets easier with experience. I'll tell you one thing right now. I would not trust Manny with any of this stuff right here. I wouldn't either. <laughs> <laughs> this boat has so many incredible things that I feel like I could explore it for days and not even find everything. And if all of that wasn't enough, it's got every water toy you could possibly imagine. But the kitchen is where the real magic happens. Chef, how are you? Chef has prepared a five course meal for us today. Are you ready? We're ready. It's time for our first course. Whoa. What I've got in front of me here is an incredible caviar presentation complete with all the traditional sides. And this caviar alone goes for $10,000, the price of our dinghy from level one. Having caviar with potato chips is one thing, but doing it with a bellini is just that much fancier. And given the boat that we're on today, I think it's appropriate for me to take a nice large scoop of caviar and place that right on top of my bellini. One more little scoop couldn't hurt. I'll finish it off with just a tiny dollop of creme fraiche, just a little bit of that egg, and just a few chives to top it off. That is what I call the perfect bite of caviar. We're moving on to course number two. This course is a beeswax dry-aged yellowtail snapper with clear soy sauce, Japanese mecan fruit, black sesame powder, and more. Visually, this dish is stunning, and I love the fact that I'm able to eat fish while floating over the sea. Because of the aging process, it takes the chef nearly a week to create this dish. It is completely unlike anything I've ever tasted before. Course number three. Oh my god. For this dish, we've got salmon skin street tacos with bluefin tuna and aura king salmon, garnished with toasted macadamia nuts, avocado crema, and micro chrysanthemum. These are so cool. The fact that the chef took the time to break down the whole salmon that he got and then turn the skin into these taco shells is incredible to me. And just by looking at this, I already know the kind of crunch that I'm about to get. That is the type of bite that makes me wish I could dine on a mega yacht every single day. There is a time when I spent $25,000 on a single taco for a video, and this right here is 25 times better. This is just insane. We are getting even more fish for course number four. For this course, we've got a tuna tataki with confit ginger, wasabi, and chili crisp. Now, if I ever order tuna tataki, this is exactly what I want it to look like. We've got that beautiful, perfect pink color on the tuna, and he's given us plenty of different sauces to dip it in. It actually tastes like he pulled the fish straight out of the ocean into the kitchen, then onto my plate. Now for our last dish before dessert. This is pork two ways, and it's made with korabuda pork, which is considered the wagyu of pork. This dish smells incredible. It's served first on this beautiful bao bun, banh mi style. If we move over here, we have this Chinese style barbecued pork. Definitely one of my personal favorites. This essentially tastes like barbecued bacon, but a million times better, and I mean it. Manny, you have to take a bite of this. Oh my God. And for our final dish of the day, we have this apple cheesecake mousse with an apple sorbet and a wagyu beef caramel powder. Can't forget dessert. I don't even know where to start with this dessert, but I guess I'll start by taking a satisfying spoonful from the apple. Whoa, the only thing I don't like about this dessert is the fact that I'm too full to finish all of it, so make sure you go subscribe so you can join me next time.